Good morning, everyone. If you don't know me, my name is Steph Drescher, and I'm the captain for the City of Madison Police Department in the executive section. And for those of you who do know me, know that it's going to be very hard for me to just stand here and try to talk to you. Does this work if I take it off? It's fine. We'll deal with it. <laughs> I move a lot. Um, I'm going to quickly address these ladies. Um, first week of class, I'm looking around, and I see Luann look at SJ and say, it's happening. <laughs> it happened, ladies, and you did a wonderful job. So in April of this year, I signed off to join the first cohort of Policing Leadership Academy, much in the same way that I joined MPD. Sign on the back page, what have I just done? What am I about to get into? What I have found is that both of the paths and the choices that I have made have shown me what true passion and compassion look like. They have been fulfilling, inspiring, and self-transformative. They've also given me lifelong friends. Don't cry, Chris. Now I'm going to cry. <laughs> um, I didn't write anything specific, but let me see what I got here in my pocket. Maybe I could do a Ken Corey on us on the napkin. No, just kidding. <laughs> nothing on the, there's nothing on the napkin, by the way. Um, so I'm going to just briefly talk about a speech that I heard that has really changed my life. In 2014, so almost a decade ago, Admiral McRaven gave the commencement speech to the University of Texas. And the Texas, uh, University of Texas slogan is, what starts here changes the world. And he said, I like it. And I was like, well, I like that too. Because can we have what we do here change the world? Yeah, I'm going to get to it in a second because I thoroughly believe that. He started out with a group of 8,000 people that were graduating that day. And he said, each person will meet about 10,000 people in their lives. If you can change 10 people's lives, and he did all the math, and I didn't do the math for this class, but in 125 years, the 2014 class of the University of Texas could have indeed changed the world. And what he talks about and goes on to talk about is the book, Make Your Bed, Simple Steps You Can Take to Change Your World and Your Life. And what he talks about is his experience being a Navy SEAL. And he talks and he equates things like make your bed, right? The title of the book. What's that mean? Start off with a task completed. Because even at the end of the day, if nothing goes well, you can get back into a bed, a bed that you made. He talks about failing and going to the circus, which is where you have to do more calisthenics and more and more and more. But when you fail, it's where you improve. He talks about being comfortable being uncomfortable. He calls, don't be afraid to be a sugar cookie. He talks about you're going to face challenges. And when you're at your darkest, look for the light. And when you're in your, in your mud up to your neck, to sing. And you can't do it alone. You need people to paddle with you. And throughout the whole book, he talks about a bell that hangs in the middle of camp. And at any point in time during Navy, Navy SEAL training, all you have to do to not be uncomfortable, not have to do more work, all you got to do is ring the bell. So the last few days listening to folks' capstones, we all faced challenges. We overcame them. And when we go back and continue to do what we do in policing, you will face challenges. There will be darkness. Look for the light. Find friends to help paddle with you. We found 24 others right here in this class. But whatever you do, just don't ring the bell. Don't quit. And just keep going. Now, on one of Ken Corey's famous napkin chats, um, he talked about talking to recruits. And the first day recruits sit in class to let them know that when they put on that badge, they take ownership of the profession. The good the bad, the past, but also the future. We have that responsibility as well as the recruit class of cohort one. We need to know when we put on the stars or the bars of what that profession has in its past, the good and the bad, and we own it. And we work to improve, to be better leaders, so that cohort, hopefully 23, 24, 25, 
they'll be sitting in a different seat. Let's make those stars and bars something that they can be proud of to sit in the seat. And I promise you I had this picked out before Joe yesterday wrote, not these Joes. Because <laughs> if you don't, you need to empower the leaders of the future, right? None of us are going to be here forever. We need to find the next leaders. Be the leader that others follow. Because leaders without followers are just people out for a walk. Thank you, guys. So you can see why we feel it's so important that you also hear from this class. And we have a distinguished member of our class who travels farther than anyone else to get here. Uh, John Webster from Manchester, England. It's not a Kleenex, but uh, it's not far away. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Chief officers, distinguished guests, colleagues, and friends. It's a huge honor for me to be standing here today in front of you all, within the walls of a prestigious university, within a quite remarkable city, four and a half thousand miles away from my home. Seven months ago, my chief, who of course some of you have met and epitomizes Britishness, asked me in his ever so traditional English accent, John, would you go across the pond, my boy, and show the Americans how we do it in our green <laughs> and pleasant land? So being a man of the world, I thought, get me some of that. Is that what they say in Texas, Chris? <laughs> Six weeks in the US, what's not to love? In all seriousness, I was excited, but also a little apprehensive. What was policing really like in the United States, I asked myself. Has it fallen as much as the media really portrays? What are its leaders like? Are they made of the right stuff, as we say in England? You see, because what happens in the United States matters, and you need to know this. So as you guys say, listen up. You have become the greatest representative democracy in the world. You stand tall for three fundamental values which are common to both of our great nations. These values wed us together. They are freedom, equality and justice. All of these fundamental human rights are rooted in fair and ethical policing. And the foundation stone of that is leadership. One of your greatest ever presidents and a dear friend of the United Kingdom, Ronald Reagan, once said, don't be afraid to see what you see. So let me tell you what I see. I see a room full of hardworking, dedicated, compassionate, courageous people, completely in love with their profession, in love with their vocation. Some might not see it in themselves, but I see what I see. All of you 100% resolute, dedicated to your communities to make them safer. Safer for the next generation, for our children and our grandchildren. I see an exceptionally hardworking university team who share those values. I see a team who look at us to make sure that we make the changes necessary to ensure that those values endure. I also see a team behind the team, the quiet and respectful donors, the good people who have invested in us, people who recognize the sacrifice that you and our colleagues make every single day. Joe, Richard Mendes, shot and killed for simply stopping kids breaking into a car. Chris, Darren McMichael, run over in a hit and run in front of his wife. Closer to home for me, Nicola and Fiona, killed in a gun and hand grenade attack by a madman. 
we see their sacrifice. But we're not alone. The vast majority of our good people see this also. They wish as well. Decent people who see what we see. These people have placed 100% trust and commitment in their safety in our hands. I'm of the firmest belief that the greatest strategic threat to policing in both of our great nations is trust, confidence and legitimacy. We have all had our problems, have we not? Across the pond, we've had to deal with Wayne Cousins, a close protection officer who kidnapped, raped and murdered a beautiful young lady simply for the crime of walking home alone after dark. You guys in the US have had to deal with Derek Chauvin, who murdered George Floyd in the most appalling manner. Both of these incidents have caused us damage, but it's damage which, in my view, is being healed as a result of our leadership. It's being healed by people like you. A famous American once said, there are people crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who do. So as Pierre, Pierre said two days ago, we should take risks. Where are you? We should be bolder. We should be less afraid to fail. As James mentioned, we should not let one day move into the next. Do not take the easy route. It's route where I come from, but route will do. <laughs> as Steph and Cindy Anna said, we should be courageous. We should be energized. We should leave this place with a renewed sense of purpose and confidence. Team, we are here for a reason. It is not by accident that you, we, have been chosen. It is because we are capable of getting stuff done, as Arnold would say. <laughs> Sorry. Irrespective of our length of service, our experience, those things matter not. You are the people crazy enough to think you're the people crazy enough to change the world. But by now, let this Englishman target just a few of you. The last time anyone did that, 250 years ago, it didn't end well for us Brits, but there we are. <laughs> but I feel quite safe today. Chief Corey, I will never take out my handkerchief ever again without thinking of you. <laughs> your notes, your words of wisdom, your experience written down on your Kleenex. I love it. Michael, the best dressed man in the room. Nearly. Wayne, you just got it. <laughs> Pierre, Hasib, golf and cigars. You would fit right in where I am from. Chris, the big Texan whose heart is made of marshmallow and has the most polite and self-assured son I have ever met. And I'm sending my daughter over to Texas. <laughs> Jesse, who has educated me on US history and culture. And of course, Joe, who has educated me on the art of the old fashioned drink. <laughs> Danita, my wife wants to know who does your nails. They are bling, they are beautiful. They match your passion and your energy. I could go on, but I won't. Each and every one of you are unique and very special. You're my colleagues and you're my friend. Before I end, I'd just like to tell a story, if I may. Um, it's a story about a young man brought up in a working class family from a rough part of town. A young man who was a bit lost in life, couldn't figure out what direction to take. Watched some of his friends take a route towards crime, driving flash cars, wearing nice watches. You know the script. But all the time that that young man knew deep inside what he wanted. He wanted to make an impact on his life and other people's lives. Well, it won't come as a surprise to you that that young man is not a young man anymore. And I suspect that the start of this story is familiar to many people in this room. But my book, your book, is not yet concluded. There are many chapters left to pen, and it is up to us to decide how they read. You, we are the leaders of today. Nobody else is going to do it. We're the people that are going to make the difference. But finally, 
to the very best of us. Luan and Sandy Joe, a lifetime of service. Thank you. Best wishes. God bless.